website success. I'm your host, Chrissy Ray, and today we are diving into website accessibility. This is a super important topic, and it's one that's at the top of my mind recently. I've been doing lots of accessibility work on client websites and my own website to make sure that everything is working as expected. Uh, so I really would love for you to pay attention. Now let's get into it. First of all, what exactly is website accessibility? It's the practice of designing and developing websites that are inclusive for everyone. So we're talking about people with visual, auditory, physical, cognitive, and neurological disabilities. We want everybody to be able to access our website. And guess what? It's not just a nice to have. It's actually a legal requirement in many parts of the world. If you're in the US, the Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, has been interpreted to apply to websites. In 2022, just last year from the time of this recording, more than 3,000 lawsuits were filed in federal court alleging that plaintiffs with a disability could not use websites because they were either not designed to be accessible or and or they didn't work with assistive technologies. And while you might think that those lawsuits are only for the big players like Target, who settled a class action lawsuit for around $6 million in 2018 because their website wasn't accessible, it wasn't usable by blind people, you would be wrong. In 2023, 77% of ADA lawsuits were filed against organizations with under 25 million in revenue. So if you're not compliant, you're really opening yourself up to potential legal issues and hefty fines or settlements. So why should you care? Well, aside from the legal aspect, which I think is pretty important, making your website accessible can also expand your audience. About 15 to 25% of the U.S. population lives with some form of disability, a visual, cognitive, or other types of disabilities. And also implementing accessibility guidelines can also help to improve your brand's reputation because you're basically sending out the message to your audience and your potential audience that says, hey, I value all of my users and I want to give everyone the best possible experience. So where should you start? Because this is a lot. I highly recommend visiting the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C web accessibility initiative website. You can get there at w3.org slash WAI. They have some really great introductory materials, including videos and training videos that'll help get you started. Now I will give you a little bit of an intro into some of the content that's available on that website in this podcast. And one of the first things that I want to talk about is the different components of web development and interaction that need to work together for a website to be accessible. A lot of people think you just need to make the website accessible, but what are all of the components that go into that? And the components include things like the content, which would be the text, the images, video, sound, code, markup, all of the stuff that's put into the website. And then you also have to worry about web browsers and media players and other user agents that are playing back or displaying the content. Another component would be the assistive technology. So things like screen readers, alternative keyboards, things like that. And then you also need to consider the user's knowledge and experience. So if the user doesn't know to use a screen reader, they might not be able to access the content. Another component would be the developers, the designers, the coders, and others who create the content, and then the authoring tools that they use to create those different components. And then finally, we've got our evaluation tools like HTML validators, CSS validators, and also web accessibility evaluators and, and tools that can evaluate the content. Now, the W3C created Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, also known as WCAG, and those guidelines are guided by four principles. And I want to talk a little bit about each of those four principles, and then I'll break it down into some specific guidelines. So the first principle is that there is perceivable information and user interface. And that means that all of your content should be presented in a way that everyone can perceive. So simple things like providing text alternatives, you might've heard alt text before. So providing that alt text using descriptive link text. So instead of just saying click here, you would actually describe what's in the link. 
those things can make a really big difference when it comes to accessibility. Another principle is operable user interface and navigation. And this principle is all about making sure that everyone can operate your website. So for example, keyboard access. If somebody can't click on links, they might need to be able to use the keyboard to access the content. And also just clear navigation in general, really important. The third principle is understandable information and user interface. So your website should be easy to understand. You need to use clear language, provide instructions, and also keep your content organized. And the fourth principle is robust content and reliable interpretation. And that means that your website should work well with a variety of user agents, including assistive technologies like screen readers and keyboards, uh, alternative keyboards. So sticking to standard markup and programming languages can help make that happen. Now the WCAG does come in three levels from A to AAA uh, with varying levels of, of uh, requirements. And it has guidelines because it is the web content accessibility guidelines, but it has guidelines that cover all of those fundamental principles. And some of the guidelines include things like providing alternative text that I already mentioned for all non-text content. So not just images, but also videos. Another one would be using clear and simple language that is easy to understand, make it so that it works for your audience. Also ensuring that all functionality is available from a keyboard, again, very important. Using color contrast that is easy to read for people with visual impairments. This is a really big one that I see very often when I'm doing website audits is low contrast. So if you've got a, a very dark color background with a slightly less dark color text that you might not have high enough contrast for people with visual impairments to be able to read it. Another guideline is providing captions and transcripts for all audio and video content, which is something that I do on my website, Success Academy website. I try to provide transcripts for everything and I do put captions in anything that doesn't have a transcript. And I try to provide both. And, and then also ensuring that all of your content is easily navigable. Now, if you're in the US and you're running a federal website, you also need to know about Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act. Section 508 requires that all electronic and information technology, also known as EIT, because the feds love their acronyms. So all EIT used by the federal government is accessible to people with disabilities. And Section 508 covers many of the same standards as WCAG, but while WCAG is a set of guidelines that the average website owner should follow, and if they don't want to get in, in the U.S. an ADA lawsuit, they should follow it. Section 508 is a set of requirements that federal websites must follow. So if you're receiving federal funds for your website, you need to follow Section 508. Now, if you're ready to dive deeper, there's a fantastic free course from the W3C on edX. edX I love edX. I've used it before. I, I got a uh, part of my master's degree on there, but it's called W3CX Introduction to Web Accessibility. It's about 20 hours. Uh, they estimate it'll take about four weeks for you to do four or five hours a week, and it'll give you a comprehensive understanding of the topic. So I Want, want you to go and look at it if you don't do anything else, but you don't have to go all in right away. You can start small, use the alt text, use some of the guidelines that I already mentioned, like the alt text for your images, make sure your website is navigable by keyboard, check your color contrast, make sure you're adding captions to your videos and adding transcripts for your podcasts and things like that. Another thing you can do is test your website. And you can use tools like the Web Aim Color Contrast Checker to make sure the colors that you're using for the background and the text, the background and foreground, have enough contrast. So I already mentioned that, but there's a really great free tool you can use for that. Just look up Web Aim Color Contrast Checker. And you can also use a tool like the WAVE, W-A-V-E, Web Accessibility Evaluation Tool for more in-depth testing. It'll do the color contrast and several other uh, guidelines, it'll check for them. And that one is available as a browser extension for Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. So definitely check it out. And while automated tools are really great and they're gonna get you a good chunk of the way there, nothing beats real user testing. So make sure that if you want your website to be truly accessible, that you're getting feedback from people with disabilities to understand how you can improve and learn more about how they're using your website. 
To wrap it all up, web accessibility is not just a checkbox you tick off. It's a fundamental aspect of good web design and development, and it's the right thing to do, and it's good business. So let's make sure that the web is a place for everyone. That's it for today's episode. I'm Chrissy Ray, and this is Website Success. Thanks for listening, and stay tuned for more awesome content. Oh, 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 oh,